to uh, Oilers Lunch on Oilers uh, Molson Canadian Pay-Per-View, and we're joined by uh, Oilers forward Sam Gagne. And Sam, it's uh, certainly been an interesting season this year, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's been tough. Um, obviously, not something that you want to go through um, ever in your career, but I believe that uh, everybody that's been through it is going to make you stronger, and um, that's the way you got to approach it. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of guys in here that just want to put the season behind them, but I think if you can take something from the season and learn something from from uh, the negative things that have happened, um, it, it'll help you going forward. So that's what everybody has to do in here. It's been an interesting year for you personally as well. You started the year on the fourth line mm -hmm. and worked your way up, had a stretch where you were playing with uh, Dustin Penner and Gilbert Brule and were racking up a lot of points. And uh, you've kind of been bounced around and, and lots of guys have been moved in and around the lineup as well. Is that just a byproduct of the team having some of the struggles that they have? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, when you're uh, out of the playoffs, I think it was five, ten games ago now, um, mathematically out. It's it's an opportunity for uh, for different guys to, to be used in different roles and to, to see how they can step up to the challenge. It's um, it's obviously a tough situation that nobody wants to be in, being in last place, being in the position we're in. But it's, uh, it's a positive in the fact that everybody gets an opportunity to show what they can do. And there's been a lot of guys bounce around to different lines. And, and um, you know, it's just all part of being a pro. And, and um, you know, learning to roll with the punches, I think uh, everybody's learning a lot from it, and, and you know, hopefully we continue to get better. You uh, put up 49 points in your rookie season, had a, a real breakout year, a tremendous uh, quarter, and you've had good closes to seasons. The first uh, two years you've been in the National Hockey League. Do you put a lot of pressure on yourself to hit numbers and hit targets? You know, you say, well, I had 49 points, and I had 45 or whatever it was last year, and I'm up, I think I'm at 41 now. I got to hit 50 points, or I got to hit 50. There's got to be constant upward progression in terms of my numbers. You know what? Um, I, I don't want to think about results too much as far as points go, um, but I, I always want to push myself to continue to get better, and I felt like I've done that. I feel like this year is my best year. Uh, I, I feel the best I've ever felt on the ice. I feel like I can, I'm contributing a lot more. And I feel like even if the numbers aren't there right now, um, you know, the numbers aren't there for a lot of guys. It's been a tough year. And um, I feel like as long as I'm feeling better and continuing to work on different, different facets of my game and, and uh, it's showing, um, th that gives me a lot of confidence going forward. Letters forward Sam Gagne joining us here on Letters Lunch. Uh, how do, first of all, I'll throw a stat at you. I believe that uh, the chances increase by 3,000 uh, to 1. If your father is a uh, ex NHL player, you're a second generation yeah. uh, Gagne. Yeah. Your dad played in the NHL. How much did he help you get here? Uh, he's the only reason I'm here. Um, my my whole family's been so supportive and uh, just awesome. It's um, you know there's you can't really put it into words. Um, you know for my dad, he uh, he retired when I was 10 years old, and and from that day forward, he was just always helping me to continue to get better. I think he uh, it was. I was maybe 11 years old, and I just had a—I remember it distinctly. I just had a game in Burlington against—I uh, think it was the Burlington Cougars—and I, I had a, a really bad game. And uh, my mom and dad sat me in the car and said, "If you want to do this, if you want to be really good," and I was 11 years old, then my dad's like, "I'm going to work with you," and I'm like, "I really want to do this." He's like, "But there's no more efforts like that. You work hard, and and you want to be a player, then I'll help you." And I'm like, "I want to be a player," and from that day, he pushed me hard, and and. Um, you know, I appreciate everything he's done for me. He's taught me so much about the game and, and what it takes to be successful. And he didn't have the kind of success you did out of the gate. He was a Rangers draft choice, and they sent him up and down. He was yo-yoed the first three or four years. Yeah, of his for career. sure. I, that, that's that's um, it, that's been huge for me. Uh, you know, having that, uh, having my dad to talk to about different things that's, that 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 go on uh, in my first four years. He never had that. He was kind of just bounced around. He didn't. He he had no one to talk to. It was kind of. Uh, a scenario where he had to work through it by himself and, and he learned a lot from that so for me um, to get a chance to listen to him and, and, and hear what he has to say it's been great for me in my first few years and and learning to persevere and get through tough times and can continue to work in my game and get better now did your dad what was the story with the rinks did he did he build rinks yeah what yeah you? it's uh, customized rinks um, he uh, yeah he built um, it mostly it was uh, outdoor rinks um, you know, it was, but it was real ice, so, you know, he had the chillers and everything. I had one in my backyard when I was growing up, and uh, it was 50 by 90 with the boards and everything, and uh, I was out there all the time, uh, you know, just having fun with it, and, um, you know, he's, uh, he's still a big part of it uh, to this day, and, and uh, it's been great. They, they, you know, they've been pretty successful, and, and um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where uh, it, it, you can, 
in, in Canada, you decide to have a pool in your backyard or a hockey rink, what do you pick? And, you know, obviously for us it was hockey rink, and, and I was always out there and had a lot of fun with it. Any of the kids you play with uh, that yeah. came over to play your house end up yeah. playing major junior or yeah. going to school um, or, or playing in a Yeah, Tavares, Tavares is the big one. I uh, went first overall last year. He uh, lived five minutes away, and his mom used to always drive him over and sit in the sit in the car while we uh, while we played, and uh, we played, and we, we had some pretty rough battles. Sam, uh, you go to London and you play with a guy named Patrick Kane, but also Sergey Kostitsin was on that team as well. Uh, you guys put up some ridiculous numbers. What was it about that system that allowed you to really kind of race up the charts in terms of uh, that draft year? Because you kept, you climbed and climbed and climbed as the season went on. Yeah, um, Dale just uh, Dale Hunter. Um, and, and Mark Hunter, they obviously know so much about the game having played it and they just gave us opportunity to go out and play the game and have fun with it and, and um, they were obviously there when we had questions and, and uh, um, you know being who they are we respected their opinion so much and we just uh, went out there and had fun and continued to try and develop and, and, and develop some chemistry with each other. I, f I feel like uh, as the season went on we got better and better together and uh, we kind of knew each other's tendencies and and uh, you know we were just allowed to go out there and play without you know we we didn't have anything going on in our head we weren't even worrying about the draft we were about winning and and playing together as a team and having fun and and uh, we had a lot of success and um, you know obviously we would like to go further in the playoffs that year and, and get a chance to maybe play in the Mem Cup but um, I feel like uh, the things I learned there um, you can't take back and and uh, I had a great year there and a lot of fun. World Juniors as well right? Yep yeah that was uh, another great experience for me uh, Anytime you get a chance to win a, a major championship, no matter at what level, it's um, you know those those are the experience that you, you, yeah you can't put a finger on. So it's it was unbelievable for me. I, I played with a lot of great players there, and obviously getting a chance to win was unbelievable. Was that the year Taze came through in the shootout? Exactly. Yeah, he scored three and three in a Tremendous row. Tremendous leader, right? Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, we had a lot of great leaders on that team, and and uh, obviously uh, Taze led the way and. And uh, had a great tournament. Those three shootout goals, uh, you know, people talk about that for a long time. We talk about the World Juniors, and uh, you take a look at the last two years, and the event's been in, in Canada, and there's a guy by the name of Jordan Everly. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's coming to town uh, with the Oilers. Uh, he'll certainly be trying to make the team out of training camp uh, mm -hmm. uh, next season. He's going to have a fair amount of pressure, probably more pressure than, than you did your year, mm -hmm. in fairness. I think that, yeah. uh, you know, you were maybe a bit, you had the Summit Series that year, and you played great in that, and your stock went up. but. People have been talking about Everly basically since uh, Ottawa, since he scored all those clutch goals. Any word of advice you would have for him uh, coming into camp? And um, do you have some empathy for perhaps what he's going to go through? Yeah, I think um, you know he's got to have a, a group of veterans around him. I, and uh, I consider myself a veteran now. I'm wow. only 20, but I know I know over. Uh, so he's got to have guys around him that are that are supporting him. It's um, you know it's obviously it's tough to come into a situation like this where. We finished in last place, and and uh, you know, there's going to be guys out there that expect him to be the savior, and you know, it's. Uh, um, I, I think he's been able to handle the pressure very well so far in his career. He's obviously scored some pretty clutch goals for Team Canada, and um, you know, I'm sure he's going to pass the test when he comes here too. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, giving him as, as much much support as you can as a teammate and helping him out. And you know, he's a great player, and uh, he's going to figure the game out. I think it's just a matter of. Continue to help him and, and uh, you know be patient as a as a as a fan. Be patient, and uh, he's going to be a great player for us uh, down the line. Is there going to be more of an onus next year? Do you think now that you know a couple guys have been moved along here? Uh, Steve Stales was a really good character guy. Uh, you know, there's going to be probably some moves in the off season as well. Do you foresee a situation where? You know, you're going to be maybe asked to take on a little bit, a little bit more of a. You just said the fact you're a 20 year old veteran, maybe a little bit more of a leadership role. Yeah, um, well, I always can't foresee the future. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen over the summer um, uh, with different different things going on. But obviously, um, it, it's uh, it's upon the younger guys to really step up and, and take it at this point. It's um, you know, uh, last doesn't sit well with anybody. Um, we're, we're not happy with the way things have gone, and uh, and we don't want it to happen again. Obviously, so there's going to be a lot of changes, and I guess we'll see what happens in the future. Sam, thanks a lot for joining us on Oilers Lunch and Molson Canadian Oilers Pay-Per-View. Yeah, thank you very much.